All right, boys and girls, welcome back. It's time for math. We are looking at day three of our math here. I'll zoom in so we can see a little bit better. So we are on number one. We have 500 plus 400. You can use vertical addition here. We add our ones, that's zero ones. Zero tens and zero tens is zero tens. Five hundreds and four hundreds is nine hundred. Or you can just know that if you have five hundreds, and you add four more hundreds together total, you have 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800, 900. So any way you need to solve it. Number two, one half of 16 is what? Okay, so for this one, we're gonna start with 16. I'm gonna go ahead and draw those out. That's 16. And if they're asking us for one half, I know I can cut this in half, exactly half. See how they match up? And so half, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, would be half of 16. Another way that you could do this is you could know that if something is half of it, that means you have two groups. This would be half, and this would be half. So if you have two groups, what needs to go in each group so that you have 16 total? And if you know your multiplication facts, you know that eight is correct there. Another way to do this is to know that half of something is the same as taking 16 and dividing it into two equal groups. And if you know 16 divided by two is eight, then you know the correct answer. Number three, divide 18 into nine equal groups. Okay, so I'm gonna draw my groups. There should be nine equal groups. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I'm gonna separate my 18. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, keep going, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, that's my total. I know there are nine groups, which tells me there are two in each group. If you know your multiplication facts, you should know that if you have 18 divided into nine groups, that's nine groups of something equals 18, Hopefully you know that that is two. Moving on to number four. Number four is with an equation instead of with words, but we're still taking 16 divided by two. So if you know that 16 into two groups, there's two groups of something equals 16. And if you think back, look, we've already done that. Two groups of something was 16 and we decided that was eight. This is a multiplication fact that many of you should know. Actually, all of you should know it. Hopefully you do. Another way to do it if you're not sure is to make your two groups and to separate your 16. Two, four, six, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And then you need to know how much is in one group. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, which matches any way you do it, you should get eight. Number five simply asks you to circle the smallest number. So I'm looking in my hundreds. I've got 400, 700, and 400, so we know it can't be that one. Seven tens and one ten. Well, which one is smaller, 70 or 10? Should say 10, so 417 is the smallest number here. Number six, pay very close attention here to the order and what um, operation is taking place, okay? It's not saying eight and minus 10, it's saying eight is the total, equals 10, oh, sorry, you can't see, 10 minus what? So if you start with 10, what do you have to take away to get to eight? Hopefully, you know that eight and two is the same as 10, which means you have to take two away. If you don't, you can start with your 10. 
and you want to get to 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, which means these would need to go away. You took 2 away. Number 7, write the time, 7.06. But notice they're not asking you to tell me what it sounds like if you say that. It's asking you something past something. Okay, so how many minutes past the hour? So it's the hour is 7. And how many minutes past the 7 is 7.06? Should be 6. So 6 past 7. I know that's a little bit confusing and that's not normally the way that we talk about it, but it is important that we understand how to write it this way as well. Number eight, how many seconds are in one minute? This is something that you just have to know and the answer is 60 seconds. Number nine, do parallel lines intersect? No, I'm even going to add never because it's so important that you understand that. Never, ever, ever do they intersect. Parallel lines look like that. They can look like that. They can look like that. Oh, sorry, you can't see that. <laughs> but no matter what, they will never, ever touch. They stay the same distance apart. And then number 10, Rex bought four pens at $1.50 each. How much did he spend? So we know that this is four groups of $1, whoops, $1.50. Okay. So you can either count this out like you would money, you can separate it. I. In my head, I always separate it to be four groups of $1 and four groups of 50 cents because that's easier for my brain. So four groups of $1 would be $4. Four groups of 50 cents I know is 50 cents and 50 cents is a dollar plus another 50 cents and 50 cents is a dollar, which gives me $2. So total, this should be $6. That is only one way to solve it. If you solved it in another way and you would like to share, please put that in the comments. You can discuss it with us. If you know how to take a picture of your work and put it in there, you can do that as well.